remember being little and seeing an ad for Static Shock and thinking to myself, what the hell is this? A cool teenage superhero that isn't Spider-Man? But I never watched it because I didn't know when it aired and I also didn't know how the internet worked. So next to Max Steel, it was a show I dream about, but simply couldn't. Therefore finally watching it now was kind of like unlocking memories from a parallel universe version of myself. Everything all of a sudden just made sense. A jokey teenager riding a skateboard, he has a nerdy best friend who's blonde, wears glasses and has an earring, fabled middle class families that no longer exist, child friendly hip hop. I literally went from, dude, I can't believe I gotta watch four seasons for this video, to, oh no, I don't want it to end. Static Shock is an incredibly joyful show with a level of sophistication that has basically aged perfectly. It deals with everything from racism, guns, religion, homelessness, and none of it, shockingly, is hidden under metaphors. But they are literal. This show has more balls than Oogie loves. The only thing you have to get over is the fact that the show is clearly made for a preteen audience, so the humor and the animation in the first two seasons look kind of off in terms of the lack of shadowing. The first season doesn't have any overarching story, in fact every season is episodic, however they're all tuned differently. In this case, it's a general trend of featuring temptations, where characters have to do the right thing in the face of a choice. Static Shock's origin is beautifully simple. Virgil Hawkins gets tempted to join a gang, which he immediately declines, but in the same night, during a gang fight, he gets exposed to chemical gases, later known as the Big Bang formula, and has superpowers. That's it. There's nothing involving guilt, nothing involving trauma. He was always a good kid, raised by a dad who works at a community center. His sister also volunteers, so being a superhero just made sense, especially with his enthusiastic best friend, Richie. We even get a dress-up montage. Say what? As a result, every episode, Static Shark is the angel on a lot of the characters' shoulders. I think my favorite instance is when Derek becomes a giant monster and Static tells him he doesn't have to be thought of as a freak just because Iban told him. And his mother thought he ran away because of her. Just because Iban wants you to think that way doesn't mean you have to. To your moms, you're always gonna be Derek, no matter what you look like. So Derek joins Static and everything works out. Virgil's paragon of sheer goodness for me is the show's most powerful draw. He likes everyone, he appreciates everything he has, and he's not insecure about being compassionate. It's impossible to dislike him, and it's even more crazy that he's voiced by Phil Lamar. You have to believe me, I I'm through- However, what the season does is strip back his high self-esteem exterior slowly to reveal the sadness beneath it. He's an easygoing kid, but there's a fight going on inside him. He's actually mourning. Virgil lost his mother. She was a paramedic who was killed by a stray bullet during the Dakota riots, which leads to Static's deep hatred of guns, but it's been five years and he's still unable to process it. Lately, I haven't been feeling up to coming here. Subsequently, the villain of this episode is an overachieving Asian kid who's like the Hulk, and right now he's mad over not getting the perfect score for his parents. The key to reasoning with him comes in the form of something Virgil keeps avoiding, family home videos of his mother as his father and sister prepare for her memorial. However, Richie gets Virgil to watch, and he learns something really special. Oh, he's not bad, honey. He's just cranky. Doesn't even know why. Sometimes you have to let him work through that cranky. Such wisdom is then used to calm the kid down, who didn't even know he was a monster, and now he's getting the best help. Static Shark is a very preachy show, and it's incredibly endearing because of it, not in spite of it. For the reason that the real content of every conflict isn't the spectacle, at least for me anyways, it was the sheer emotional release that came from seeing an anonymous person with no obligations to help others, he's usually not family or have deep personal relationships with his opponents, but he always provides social support. At the memorial service, Virgil speaks. I miss my mother so much, I forced myself not to think about it. But now I know that was wrong. I've learned something just recently that's very important. My mother's physical being may be gone, but her spirit is still very much alive within me. This entire episode reveals that his entire being is a compilation of the lessons taught to him by his environment. His compassion and his strength was a gift from the love he received. So when he sees others who lack it and go down the wrong path, instead of compromising himself, he gives them the love he received. And the strength is sustained by the same strength he has from living with the pain of not having a mother. The show really had earned something from the audience. Acceptance. It had successful ratings, it would go on to win awards, and going to season 2, you can really feel this greater enthusiasm because it begins to construct a mythology with the broader context in mind. In other words, lots of cameos. Batman, Shaq, 
AJ from the Backstreet Boys, next season there's Lil Romeo and more. Seeing all this 22 years later feels like a weird time capsule where it's not just about re-experiencing the greater pop culture environment, but also experiencing how Static Shock had become part of the zeitgeist itself. The network had valued the show enough to suggest and support all of this. Here, a high profile black superhero who could stand side by side with any other respectable daytime animated programs, and people were proud to endorse it. Unfortunately, Static would eventually be cancelled after four seasons because they couldn't make any additional profit from Merch and Toys. Static Shock got cancelled because it wasn't making them no extra money. So we were the top rated show and had won a Humanitas Award, but like I said back then, they didn't care about quality in mm -hmm. cartoons. Yeah, it was boy. just about Toys R Us. It's so f***ed up. But in the end, we have an episode of Static Shock called Static Shack. That's something worth valuing, I guess. I love how even Dwayne McDuffie was like, why was this episode so good? I thought the Shack episode, for instance, revealed a lot about Virgil's character and his relationship to his community. Virgil's dad brings about an old friend. It's Shaq. He's a well-mannered chill dude who actually likes Sharon's cooking, which is whack, because the joke is that it's always bad. Shaq even promises to play basketball with Virgil, but they constantly get interrupted. However, in the end, they have the time. Shaq mentors Virgil over how to balance his double life, the act of appreciating both sides of himself. I break out, find some daylight, turn back into Shaquille. Just your regular seven-foot guy. This is even before he finds out Virgil is Static Shock and helps him take out the bad guys. As Shaq leaves, he appreciates all that he got to experience, but his favorite part of the journey was meeting this teenage boy. Uh, not in that way. I don't mean to reference this episode as representative of the entire season in terms of being goofy. This season does feature both a really brutal episode about homelessness and the school shootings, but this Shaq episode represents a broader retuning of the show's energy, where there's an additional injection of pop culture excitement woven directly into the show's internal mythology. The show is proud of what it is, it's grateful of its opportunity, and it excels at everything it does. This overall, with a lack of a better word, vibe gives Static a unique presence that transcends the tropes of young teenage superheroes. He's a piece of black culture, and I'm totally the most qualified person to talk about it clearly. Season 3 grapples around variations of the theme, who am I? Like there's a kid called Marcus who's stuck with being seen as a gangster after coming out of juvie. Virgil looks up to Spider, an African superhero. He also reconnects with his heritage. Richie becomes a superhero gear. Isn't it fun being a super brain? There's a greater sense of personal review and discovery threaded across the episodes, and it's all in the service of exploring what kind of mindset is needed for Static to stay as a hero. This season is unafraid to make him a little bit more cocky, a little bit more angrier. There's literally an episode where he's out of control and he needs to be held back, especially after his overconfidence gets Daisy hurt. Instead of handling business, you were showing off again. That's how she got hurt. You're as much to blame as Puff. It should be noted this episode was produced for season two, hence the older animation style, but it still fits into this greater seasonal trend. The act of sustaining who he is requires effort, and that is a process this season celebrates when Static meets his mother again. It's not a retcon, it's time travel. Five years after the Dakota riots, rescue workers are remembered as heroes, which includes Jean Hawkins. By honoring Jean and her colleagues, you also honor her belief that the noblest act anyone can perform is to help another person in need. Virgil, out of the entire family, misses her the most because he's the youngest. He had the least time with her, and those memories now feel particularly fragile with every passing day. I think I'm starting to forget who she was. But through Nina, he has the chance to save her and he tells her everything, begging her to stay off the streets. If you are my son, I'm so proud of what you're doing. However, she receives a call about injured kids, so she leaves anyways, because she has to. It's in her nature to help, if she knows she can. So in the present, she's still gone. It wasn't like your mother to hide from danger, Virgil. She was dedicated to her work and to helping people. On the night of her death, all anyone could remember was her saying how proud of her she was of her son, and Virgil hopes he can take comfort from that. But with these new memories, Virgil feels more confident about not forgetting her. Static is a simple character, but there's so much depth below, and the best way to see that depth is to look at them at different angles. But what can we learn from Static Shock? I had so many ideas for this video essay and none of them really panned out. First, I wanted to look into the idea of pro-social behaviors and how he exhibits them. Then it was about how the show constructs its messages. But these all felt so obligatory, they didn't really go anywhere. We've got to go deeper into Static's character and find something conclusive, something that really summarizes his best quality. It was only from talking about his relationship with his mother and I guess Shaq, I found something. Virgil has a unique ability to withstand negative life events and find meaning in them. Where other people crumble into despair, he transcends it. 
he's very resilient. As Newman defined, resilience can also be explained as a process, namely the process of effective adaptation in the face of adversity, including family and relationship problems, serious health problems, and or workplace and financial stresses. For Static, his resilience is inseparable from his family and relationships because his concern for others makes his own hardships and stress lighter. Whether you are a disciple of Muhammad, a child of Abraham, or a member of the body of Christ, you know that you are called upon to care for the needy and the poor. This great country of ours is so very blessed, yet for some, the blessings are out of reach. Therefore, it is our duty to offer these people safe conduct through life's difficult journey to be their ambassadors of compassion. What Static Shock teaches us is that resilience is not founded in individualism, but manifested through community. Through relationships, compassion becomes strength, and through relationships, everyone is protected. Everyone is supported. However, that being said, season four is not very good. Even Dwayne McDuffie was like, yeah, things could have been different. There's like a weird meanness to it that was previously absent. There's more shouting, arguments, schisms. I mean, one of the first things that happens for this season is Static being really annoyed about Shebang joining him and Gear despite his invitation last time. And then she even gets ostracized at school for being too bossy. You said you liked my ideas. Everything does work out in the end though, but that's not the good vibes you go into the show looking for. And that's because the season is retuned once again. It's about people learning to coexist and live with each other to an extent. The episode that really puts focus to this and represents this on the most literal level is in the penultimate episode. Mr. Hawkins gets captured by the bad guy and as Static goes to reassure him, he replies, Maybe in the back of my mind I've always known. Oh, Pops, I never meant to put you in danger, I swear. I know that, son. I don't blame you. But it's quite a shock to find out your son's a superhero. Virgil's dad is a truly wonderful man. He's kind, compassionate, and despite his own experience with racism, he's not bitter. He's accepted reality as what it is and still holds on to his integrity to do better, believing in fairness and building something from adversity. That kind of hate feeds on itself. My best friend's gone because of you and your stupid racism. But Richie's made up his own mind about who to like. He's broken his father's cycle of intolerance. Man. Virgil has modeled a huge part of himself from him. He's eternally grateful of his presence. However, he's always hid his static identity because he just can't take it if his old man wouldn't accept him. Do your folks know where you are, young man? This is what happens at the end of the episode, in fact. Mr. Hawkins is uncertain if he can give his approval, but he relents out of respect that it is ultimately their choice. It sounds like you don't want us to be superheroes anymore. I guess I don't. But you were given these powers. And you'll have to decide for yourselves when to use them. For me to stop you just wouldn't be right. Pops, you're the greatest. The greatest squared exponentially. What I wanted to do with this video was just to push everything I felt into words and let the show speak for itself. And upon stepping back, what I saw is a show about values. As an early 2000s show, there's a trusted presence between individuals and institutions, individuals and communities, and even individuals between individuals from different sides. It's almost alien. The episode that dealt with Richie's racist dad doesn't end with him being consumed by racism so much that he dies or something, but he realizes he's wrong from his son running away, and Mr. Hawkins still extending out his hand regardless. It is through valuing him as someone who still deserves help that he changes, and Richie's dad would go on to be a common background character who's fully integrated into the diverse cast. A lot of the antagonists who surrender get the help they deserve. The Dakota police support Static, and the media treats him with respect, while everyone are just sort of naturally orientated towards goodness in general. On one hand, this could be argued that it's pretty naive and made for babies, but on the other hand, watching it in 2024, it felt something useful for the soul. Static Shock paints a world that's in progress, where it still features many problems we still face today, but it is still progressing towards a better place, and instead of making it an explicit message, it treats it as what it is, an ongoing process. The last word of the show is literally. Yeah, they can't get rid of us that easily. Which is pretty ironic because the show got cancelled. But trust produces trust. Resilience produces resilience. Progress is possible, because just look at Virgil and his parents. They gave him these values, and he gives it to everyone else.
Static Shock video. So this video probably should have been made years ago, but here it is anyways. Uh, I also didn't really touch on the DCAU crossovers because I think it would make more sense to devote an entire video to that. Especially since this video kind of took a life of its own. So I felt it made more sense to kind of carry it on to its most sort of natural destination. Anyways, especially thanks to everyone on Patreon. Uh, more of these big uh, retrospectives. I say big. This one's, uh, like, what is it, 15 minutes or something? Mm -hmm.